Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock, Central Time. Someone was commenting that before. It is the DJ Roundtable. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. And also to make sure that you guys understand what's going on, and if you could do me a favor here, is don't uh, don't forget to follow, like, subscribe. Smash the like button to all these guys here who are on the show. All their links are down below, so make sure you show some love and go to their channels. We have a lot of great DJs on here all the time, so make sure that you, when you're watching the show, you go to their channels, you subscribe, follow their channels, and follow what they're doing because they have some great gig logs, tips, and tricks, and especially stuff going on, which we're going to touch on a little bit. It's this past weekend, which was a holiday weekend. So that being a fun time weekend, excitement, and all the stuff going on, we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. But please, go to their channels, follow them, especially DJ Cool Thing, Cool Thing Entertainment, uh, DJ Salsis, uh, Jeff, you got Dwayne, you got DJ Brantley, you got all these guys here who are all great DJs. And don't forget... Follow, like, subscribe to other DJs who have been on the show, who have a presence on YouTube, and make sure that you like and subscribe to them as well. Plus, when you're liking and subscribing things, why not hit that like and smash that like button and follow us here on the channel? All right. Well, welcome, 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 Dwayne and DJ Brantley. We were talking a little bit before the show about some stuff, about some fun things. And a little bit about the weekend. Uh, good morning. Oh, Mike, did you just change time zones? Now you're saying good morning or you just woke up. <laughs> DJ Mikey Mike from Pennsylvania is in the chat. I see you, sir. Um, Just want to talk about and go through this past weekend. Uh, I know not everyone had a gig. And I see uh, DJ Brentley's assistant, as always. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Oh, how about DJ Mikey Mike on YouTube? It's DJ Mikey Mike. So it's Mr. DJ Mikey Mike on YouTube. Yeah, um, yeah you caught my attention. I, I read what's going on. All balls on, we can get to it. <laughs> and as well as uh, DJ Brentley's assistant, always uh, chiming in with her fun and antics. There she yeah. is, cheerleader. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is she going to go for the cheer squad this year? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, I think she'd be an awesome cheerleader. I know she, she 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 would. She would be awesome. Oh yeah. I think she would be awesome. The only bad thing is that when she gets older, boys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. She's gonna yeah. be she's gonna, as soon as she's gonna be boy crazy. She Don't worry. Have I have her ready. Don't worry. Don't worry. I have a kid in my uh church class who's a cheerleader. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, my my granddaughter, <laughs> she does the uh uh okay. tumble stuff uh so she's uh tumbling and doing all the fun uh gymnastic stuff <laughs> so um want to talk about this past weekend uh okay. i want to see a show of hands who here dj this weekend matt you also dj didn't you yeah yeah, yeah. jeff didn't and cool thing uh -huh. didn't so Jeff and Hunter did. I, 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 I barely have DJ gigs, barely, especially oh, no in problem. the last couple of years, barely. But here's a question for you guys, anyways. Even though you didn't have a, a wedding or a party or an event this past weekend, when you have back to back, that means you know wedding after a wedding, and they're kind of a similar area. Do you try to uh, basically? figure out a way to stay in the area or do you go back home? What I mean by that, give you an example. Saturday, we were out in Rockford, Illinois, which is about, uh, about 100 miles northwest of Chicago. So it's up toward the Wisconsin border and west. And then we had to go straight east over to Lake County to the Channel Lakes and about an hour and a half east to get to another venue up in Lake County. Uh, again, near the Wisconsin border. So we didn't come south to where we were at because we're pretty far south. We had to go basically straight east to go to the other venue. So what we did was we stayed at a hotel. We stayed at a um, hotel in Rockford. Uh, we went up there Friday, uh, was able to load in and, you know, set up Saturday. We went downstairs and set up Saturday. 
uh, and then stayed there Saturday night and then Sunday, you know, when it checkout time, which was like 11 o'clock, we left to go to the other venue and the setup. And then we came home late Sunday night, early Monday morning to come here. Now, when you have a wedding that are close to each other or in a similar area, do you try to stay in a hotel or try to figure out a way to minimize your travel? So I'm going to go to Hunter. Uh, Hunter, if you had to have back-to-back -back events, so day after day, and they were in the same area, and they weren't really close to home, would you stay at a hotel or would you just go back home and go to the other yeah. venue the next day? Definitely. I would definitely stay at a hotel and then drive to the, next, the other gig the next day. I actually had a back-to-back -back, uh, gig back in November of 21, back in 2021. It was a 50th birthday party right down here on Oak Grove Road, where I live. And, of course, in downtown Conway, so it was in the same area for a wedding for my cousin. And it was, one, you know, the 50th birthday party was on Saturday and the other was on Sunday. So I could just come straight home and get ready at home since it was in the same area. So... Yeah, I would definitely stay in a hotel if it was in different areas. Okay, Jeff, what about you? What do you usually do? When that, that'll you... be the same. That, that'll be the safe thing instead of driving at night, especially. At oh yeah, safe. obviously. Don't want to drive uh, tired. <laughs> oh no, you never want to, Jeff. What about you? Do you usually, if you do back to back in the same area and they're far from home, do you get a hotel or do you travel back and forth? Yeah, I don't have that many gigs that far away from home. Uh, I've only had a couple, so I've driven back, uh, except for one was uh, all the way down at the beach. And uh, they put me up because they knew that they were hiring me for, uh, you know, three and a half hours away. But um, no, that's, um, you know, if, if it's more convenient, uh, absolutely. I would stay in a hotel, but there is something about sleeping in your own bed. Uh, and, you know, packing your gear, you know, where, you know, it's safe that for me, it's my garage, uh, you know, even if it stays in the van or in the vehicle. Um, uh, so, you know, there's some comfort, uh, to sleeping in your own bed. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. but if it's more convenient, yeah, absolutely. Stay in a hotel. Well, you're going to say Hunter. Yeah, uh, I do agree with that. <laughs> the comfort about sleeping in your own bed. <laughs> oh yeah. But yeah. You have no choice. <laughs> and I, I have a hard time sleeping in other beds. Actually, the hotel we're at, um, the bed was actually fairly comfortable. I just have a hard time falling asleep. And even though I brought my own blanket and my own pillow, which is a way to kind of feel like at home. And it was a cool hotel. Um, but it is sometimes hard for me to fall asleep when I know it's not my own bed. So, Dwayne, for you, my brother in Ohio... And I know you've probably done some back-to-back -back stuff. In Ohio, you're, you're again, kind of like here, you, there's a lot of cities not super far away, but also not super close, too. And sometimes you may have to travel an hour and a half, two hours to go to a gig because, you know, you're spread out and so forth. Would you stay at a hotel nearby? And if so, what would you do? Would you, Or would you just go back home and then go back to the other venue the next night? Um, if it's... Uh... If it's, I did, I've done that before, but I always came back home. It was just easier for me to just jump in the car, hit the highway and come back on home. Okay. So if I had to stay at a hotel, I would stay at a hotel, but no, I've been lucky enough to have everything right. I'm right in the dead center. So. I mean, the only time I stayed, yeah, the only time I stayed in a hotel was during those, uh, Dominion Church Epic Youth lock-ins because they were always at night and uh, we were so far from home. That's the only time I stayed in a hotel. But other than that, all of my gigs were in the same area. What well, one of the things we ran into um, beginning of this year, uh, my New Year's Eve wedding, um, was also in, out in Rockford. And Ro again, Rockford is about an hour and a half, hour forty five minutes away, depending where it's at in Rockford for me. Uh, how did I get there? And when we had, we had the wedding ending at one o'clock in the morning. Again, they they paid for it. They had all these extra services. Um, when we ended at one o'clock in the morning, we did not want to drive the almost you know hour and a half, hour and three quarters home. So we stayed at a hotel. So we went up. I, I want to say New Year's Eve was a Saturday. I have to look at this ca the calendar. I maybe I'm probably dead wrong. But where it was, we drove the day before. So we got up there, we spent, you know, basically spent the afternoon and the evening there at the hotel, 
Next morning, drove up from the hotel to the venue, set up in the venue, and then that night broke down, drove back to the hotel, went to sleep, and in that way we kind of bypassed the uh, amateurs out at you know one, two, three in the morning driving. However, and I'll tell you this little story: when we got back to the hotel, um, there was uh, a uh, impromptu party going on. Uh, no, we weren't DJing there. <laughs> uh, but the uh, local authorities did come and uh, shoo some people away. And the management staff of the hotel was uh, the onboard uh, ma night manager. And I think uh, some else came in. Uh, they came in and uh, basically quieted down very quickly. And uh, the uh, law enforcement uh, personnel was giving people choices. Either they can leave or they leave with them. So they had choices and they decided that, heck, you know, I think it's better off that I leave my own accord versus going with the police. So it, it's one of the things that sometimes, uh, you know, hotels, depending on what night it is, especially New Year's Eve, can be a, 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 a you know, kind of a, you know, can be anything goes for some people. So uh, DJ Bradley, I know that uh, up there in beautiful Wisconsin, you're kind of spread out as well, pretty far, and you go a little traveling into a little bit into Minnesota and also a little bit into eastern Wisconsin. And yeah. uh, if you decide to travel and you have multiple weddings in a certain area, do you get a hotel room for both you and your daughter, or for your at least for yourself, and have your daughter, you know, stay with friends or whatever? And uh, do you uh, do you do that, or you just say, hey, you know, what? I'm going to go back home? And then turn back around and go back to the next venue the next day. You know, it may be like an hour and a half away. No, I'm I'm hotel friendly. I love hotels. I'm not. It's one of my favorite, or it used to be one of my favorite things to do was if I was on a trip, you know, or going on trips and crashing in decent hotels. So yeah, if I'm gonna be farther out, you know, than what I guess the cutoff points around an hour and fifteen, an hour and twenty minutes at most. So if I have a wedding that ends at midnight, my goal is to be home by 2 a.m., which does, you know, or, you know, lock, stock, and barrel, everything put up completely off the street. So when bar time hits, we're away from the drunk drivers. With that, if I'm out of town and I'm, map, you know, routing my gigs correctly, I will definitely, like, hotel it up fairly frequently. So if I'm, like, taking a club... Like, I have a wedding, say, somewhere on the east side of Wisconsin. I will try to pair that up with a club gig, for example, where I'm already getting my room. And all the weddings I've, yeah, every wedding I'm taking nowadays, if I'm leaving town to go to, like, Green Bay, Milwaukee, Madison, or anything like that, uh, part of my part of my fee is get, I'm getting a room out of it. But I'll ask the couple if they have a block reserved. So they can say, or, you know, and then I'll put it into my price. So it'll save them a few bucks on the end of it all. Now, with in that same stroke, if I'm DJing anywhere outside of lacrosse on any given drinking holiday, I'm getting a room. I am not taking the chance, like, be it Oktoberfest, St. Patrick's Day, New Year's Eve. I'm not coming back. I'm not going to take the risk of getting hit by somebody getting in an accident, anything like that. And really, what's to be... And now, granted, in Wisconsin, on New Year's Eve, for example, the bars can stay open as long as they want to, legitimately. You can stay open until 7 or 8 in the morning, and close for an hour, and then reopen, which is what a lot of the bars will do. So the last few years I was down in Madison for New Year's Eve, it was well worth it, because the club I'm DJing at is closing at 2 a.m., 2.30 because they're, you know, and they know better, nothing good can happen after a legitimate bar time. Things will digress shortly thereafter. But at least it gave me a chance to get out in downtown Madison and do a little drink in those couple of years. And, you know, get dinner, see things that aren't in small town lacrosse, Wisconsin. So I'm all about staying in hotels. Plus, if I've got, a, say I've got a gig in Stevens Point and a gig down in Green Bay, check out, like you said, when you were in Rockford, it's 11 a.m. I'll find I'll take the late checkout and you know pay the extra 25 bucks or whatever and check out at one 
But if I'm going to a club gig in Green Bay from Stevens Point, well, I've got eight hours, you know, to kill before I even have to load in and do sound check. So now I can go check out the town, you know, like go get something cool to eat in Green Bay, check out a site, do anything that's out of the usual. So before here, that. here's a question for you as a Chicagoan, unless you re- revoked your Chicago card, do you take the <laughs> Chicago Bears bumper sticker and place on anything that has Green Bay Packers on it? Oh, no, we won't do that. I am not doing anything oh. detrimental to you me DJ that. Packers That's game tradition. Stadium you. That's tradition. Oh no. I, I'm I'm a Packers fan though. So oh, that's it. Your Chicago card's revoked. It's okay. I can live with that. I mean, I, one of the rare opportunities that you know the DJ you get is to DJ like, you know, tailgate parties outside the stadium. And I gotta say, what la- I did one a couple years back. Uh, at Stadium View, which is literally, you walk out the front door of Stadium View and you see the front door of Lambo. And I'm on a stage in the middle of winter. It's 15, 20 degrees out. They've got a heater on me and it's not helping. And there's 10,000 of your closest friends, at least for that moment, doing all sorts of obnoxious stuff. It was It's the most surreal and coolest gig I think I've ever had, but worth every penny to revoke the Chicago card. Uh, see, I, I couldn't do that. I did play like Bear Down Chicago Bears like every five minutes, just to... <laughs> pop bang on the drum all day and say go pat go once, and they're your friends for at least 20 minutes. No, I had to wear my Bears hat, my Bears shirt, and you know, uh, you know, you a uh, you're a dick uh, uh, sweater. <laughs> It would be like the coach. <laughs> See, a scar you're, a, you're, a scar you're bringing back the nightmares of the Super Bowl shuffle to me. When's uh, I would play when's that too. Bears reached uh, the postseason. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Although you know, everybody is saying this year, you know, Justin Fields is the new. Yeah, I mean, his numbers are great, but we'll we will see. see. We will see. Thursday night, this Thursday, starts off NFL football season. So Thursday night is a kickoff with Kansas City being one of the teams to watch starting Thursday night. So Mahomes and the whole entire team Thursday night. So, uh, oh, DJ Mikey Mike said the Jets stole your QB. Um, (laughs) Man, they did. Uh, Yep. DJ Adrian E said 2020. DJ AD also said hello, gents. And there's a couple of things I'm going to uh, get back in the chat here. Um, for a parenting trip for you, uh, Mikey Mike said, uh, I had my loaded weapon when my daughter was a teenager. That was, that's his, that's his thing. Um, definitely would uh, say as a parent, as a, having a daughter and been through, <coughs> about to go through, sir, just oh. make sure you always support her and love her and, be open air because you never know what you hear. It's oh yeah, it's oh yeah. Do. And again, she's a great girl. Have faith in her, but also show her the right way. And again, Jeff's got kids too. I'm sure he does the same thing. Listen to his his uh his child his children and support them. Uh, Dwayne, you got kids too, right? You're muted. You're muted. You're still muted. You're- <laughs> oh, I got a stepdaughter and granddaughter. Well, there you go. And again, a parent, uh, Hunter, maybe one day, Matt, maybe one day. Got to hey. find uh, the right uh, the right girl, and maybe we'll be a parent. Yeah. But um, you know, it's I'm one of the things much, as a parent. At church, I'm a parent figure. Well, yeah, because you're an yeah. adult, and you know, you you show you show the right way of doing things. You know, as a parent, it's always you always try to do what's best for your children. The um, the one thing is that uh, Jeff, where you're at in um, in the Carolinas, there, uh, I know that I, I I'm I'm trying to think now. Is the area you're in is that really known for as a party area? It's more or is it more of an adult area, far as you know, uh, mentality? Because like Wisconsin is very much a party state. They you know they were one of the last states to do twenty one for alcohol. 
<laughs> it, it depends on where you are in North Carolina. Uh, we've got one of the largest populations of colleges and universities uh, in the country. So oh, yeah. if you look at it from that aspect, it's probably one of the most partying states in the in the U.S. Um, but, you know, I live in Greensboro and they say if you want to raise a child, live in Greensboro. If you want to raise hell, live in uh, Charlotte or there Atlanta. you go. So, you know, it's, it is what it is. Uh, Greensboro is a great location. If you do have kids, um, there's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of kid friendly, uh, places to visit, to go, you know, zoos, uh, you know, children's places. Um, you know, so, so yeah, it, it is what it is, but, uh, I wouldn't consider Greensboro a, uh, a big party uh, area. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, it, it does have several colleges, but, um, no, yeah, it's, it's not like ECU. <laughs> Living in a college town, we have one of the biggest colleges ever. Coastal Carolina University. Woo! So yeah, there I, you go. I love living up here in Wisconsin for the simple reason that of the top tw what is it, 25 drunkest counties in America, Wisconsin has nine of the top 10. Right out the bat, La Crosse is like number nine, I want to say. And other places I DJ at, like in Madison, Green Bay, those are way up there in like the top twos and threes of the drunkest places in the state. So it makes for great DJ nights. I mean, no offense to all the other Wisconsin people, but Wisconsin is only a town based off of beer and cheese. La Crosse. No, Wisconsin in the general state. is just beer and, and cheese. cheese. She is accurate on that. She's, She's very, very accurate. accurate. We, do, we do call you guys cheddar heads. Oh, yeah. And we know you guys love your beer up there, you know. And uh, it was, I mean, it's don't no, no love from Illinois. <laughs> I mean, it's honestly, it may even like from weddings to clubs, because of how hard the state parties, it makes all of the nights 90% of the time just buck wild. At least that's what I see. I'm all about the buck wild part of it and less about the reserved traditional part of it all. Well, the other thing also, if you want to watch lacrosse in its great glory, um, <laughs> Code Blue Cam on YouTube has a lot of stories of lacrosse, including the yeah, latest one I just watched. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just watched watch the latest the one there uh, of a gentleman who uh, was threatening an off-duty police officer. Uh, the <laughs> sergeant pulled his uh, weapon on him. The guy called 911. Uh, <laughs> and got, got arrested taken out on a, on a felony stop yeah was arrested uh was got uh was got to has oui versus down here in illinois dui so he got an oui had a uh crack pipe in his pocket basically for smoking meth or whatever he was smoking yeah and had uh other drugs with him so it, it's it's one of the things that uh you know if you want to see the best parts of uh lacrosse you can watch code blue cam on youtube uh i'd never see dj brentley on there but I'm sure he's probably seen a few people that he has seen once or twice in lacrosse or they're very well known. So. Oh, yeah. Here, it was – lacrosse is so silly and crazy in that, you know, like supporting the drug life and party lifestyle. There was a former woman of the evening named Peaches who was so famous because she would – you know, turn like attract her uh, clientele by singing and playing guitar on a street corner. I'm not kidding. I am not kidding. If you look her up on YouTube, I and, don't want to. Nope. No. 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 No need to. She she recently passed, but I, I was why. about her before I moved here, and then had to experience her while I was walking down the street one day. I'm like, oh, that must be who everybody's talking about, and everybody in the town's like, oh yeah, that's Peaches, and she was the, you know, very well known for her uh, her job, and recently passed and had a tremendous outpouring on social media of all of you know like everybody does. But it was pretty insane how many people she actually kind of brightened days for in this town. Even though she was on the other end of it all, she'd make people giggle, smile, and laugh when you're driving down the street. You are asking, did you uh, happen to uh, experience her once or twice? No oh, walking pass. No, no, no. My no. daughter and I heard one spring morning when I had the window open at 8 a.m. And she's like, what's that? I'm like, something you don't want to be. Close the window and went back to sleep. Very, very true, sir. So, Matt, I haven't got to you yet. I'm going to ask you, 
if you have a, a couple gigs back to back and they're not close to you, because I know the Cal, the Southern California area, you know, LA and S- San Diego there, as you got some heavy traffic in those areas mm-hmm. and it could take you a long time to go from where you're at to like downtown LA. And, you know, it could take hours sometimes in heavy traffic. Would you prefer to stay at a hotel and go from one gig to another, especially they're kind of close to each other, or do you come back home and then go back to the other gig it, the next day? It depends. So if I have a gig in San Diego, which is about with no traffic, hour 20 from me, uh, but there's always traffic going south. So usually it's about two to two and a half hours. Um, I have a, my good friend lives in San Diego, so I always crash with him. Um, if I have a gig in Temecula, my other good friend lives in Temecula, which is like wine country over where Jay Brandon is. Uh, so I'll stay out there because either of those is like an hour and a half to two hours. And it's not a fun drive either. Uh, San Diego is not as bad, but Temecula, where I live, if I could fly there, I'd be there in 20 minutes. But you have to go up and around the mountains or you can go 30 minutes south and through the mountains down this sketchy canyon road that takes forever to get there. So uh, it's always better just to go up, take the toll road, go up, out, and around. But it's just a long, boring drive. And uh, so if I have something in Temecula, I had one there on Friday this weekend, and uh, I just crashed to his place after. And uh, luckily I didn't have one the next day. But uh, if if I'm, like, back-to-back in Santa Clarita, which is farther than L.A., because, like, downtown L.A. to me is, like, 45 minutes with no traffic. So going up sucks, but it's always quick coming back. Uh, but I try to piggyback them if they're far. Like I've got one in Santa Clarita and another in Lake Arrowhead. Either of those is a two hour drive from my house, but between them, they're only an hour. So, um, the hard part is though, is charging everything. So like my up lights have to be charged. My par lights have to be charged. My thump goes have to be charged. My, cause I always charge the night before, uh, or the day before, whatever. Like I, everything needs to be fully charged. I don't let it go for two days. Um, just cause I don't trust that. And, uh, then I got to charge my iPad and my phone and my camera and my portable battery bank. So it's like, a and my, yeah, it's a lot to charge. So if I can figure out a way to do that efficiently, which I have, then I'll stay the night. Um, but usually I, I don't have as many crazy far gigs, um, luckily, but. So I, I know sometimes you use a trailer, um, yeah. And one of the things that when you're saying about charging things um, that I know some other DJs do is they have the battery, lack of term, generators that are basically yeah. these big, huge ear lithium ion or uh, LiFo uh, batteries, which the LiFo batteries are better than lithium ion. And they will, they, they have in their trailer, open up the, open up the uh, items, lights and so forth and so on plug those in to the battery pack and the battery drawing the battery pack out to charge the battery on the lights. So that may be a thing right there. If you're using a trailer to buy one or two of those packs and you can charge your lights up pretty quickly off of that, those main batteries. And they're, they're, they're not, they're like, a, they're like a gas generator. They're not cheap, but they have very large batteries and you can charge multiple things at the same time. Because they are designed to replace a gasoline powered generator, but because you have no com- no combustion going on, you can put it into an enclosed area, and you'll kind of charge up your item. Now, the only downside is that you do want to have some kind of precaution, just in case the battery decides to go crazy. Battery fires do happen, so it's one of the things that you may have to look at and go, okay, fine, great. How do I have some kind of protection just in case something should go awry? do you know do some caution but that is could be a uh, idea for uh for that a couple other things here uh mikey mike said he will sleep in the van but will charge for accommodations okay he can sleep in the van and and charge for it and also adrian e said oh but he bet that she made people smile okay, your friend peaches you. there out there in out there in wisconsin the, in the land of cheese and beer and peaches and I mean, peaches grow on trees. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I leave stuff in the trailer and then just run like a big extension cord uh, out of whatever, you know, garage or house or place. So I don't have to bring it in. 
it, it, it helps, you know, the, um, like Saturday's wedding, we had, uh, pretty much everything charged beforehand. I had one light, uh, which I think the battery starting to go bad on it. Um, not have a full charge. So when we set everything up and went over to the ceremony, I had plugged into the, uh, Tracy actually had plugged into the wall. So we had, ch uh, charging, um, it was full charge. It died early in the night. Uh, it died like around 11 o'clock, but between 11 and midnight, people didn't care about the lights around the back wall. Actually, like 1130-ish, 1140-ish, Tracy went over and turned the lights off and pulled them off the back wall anyway. So it's just one of the things that, uh, you know, you want things charged up. You want things working 100%, especially if you're relying on battery-powered stuff. Those batteries need power to <laughs> regenerate. Um, speaking of battery-powered stuff, uh, I want to start with Jeff on this one um, because he is like me. Usually, like he loves line arrays, like I do. He's the same booth I have, so him and I are kind of similar in that area. Uh, he also does uh, video DJing. Uh, have you ever thought of getting one of those uh, large battery units and just running that um, to charge your lights or something like that if you're at a venue? Instead of uh, charge pre-charging them before you get uh, to a venue, you ever thought of doing that, or thought of uh, using one of those jackeries yeah. or something? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I was just looking up what I bought. I just bought a um, on Amazon just this week. Well, last week, get a guy here. Um, no, I got here Friday actually. Um, it is a portable power station, 150 watt. It's a very small one, but it will power my uh, my ceremony rig um for you know probably a couple of days uh it'll power that and the speaker uh even though the speaker is um is battery operated you know it'll last a long time as well but if i forget to charge the speaker this will power both the ceremony rig and the speaker everything so it's just a uh it's a portable power station engine star 155 watt um 42,000 milliamps or 42 amps uh, power bank. So, so it's got one 110 plug on the front. So I, I, I use that. I got that. And it's not going to be enough probably to power, you know, my, uh, my main rig, my main, uh, my main speakers. Um, I'm just hoping that if you lose power in a venue um you know they're not going to be doing much you, you know they're, they're not going to be expecting the dj to continue um so so i'm not going to probably fork out the big money for one of those that you're talking about one of those big uh you know basically a, a generator replacement so they're nice they're great you know jackery makes a bunch of them there's uh some other brands that have been coming out in the past year um, but yeah, I, I, I'm not going to invest that much, you know, for a battery system. Um, mainly what I use the battery system for is where I don't have power, like a ceremony setup, that type of thing. And oh, so at the pool, you know, I'll, I'll take my, uh, battery powered speaker down to the pool and, uh, you know, during the summer and, and, and play tunes for everybody. So, so the, uh, the unit you got, what, what did that, what did that run for that, uh, that power unit? Um, yeah, I'll tell you exactly what it is. I think it was under a hundred bucks. It's uh, it's listed at one nineteen. Uh, there's a twelve dollar coupon on it. So oh. yeah, it's an Engine Star, uh, one hundred fifty five watt, uh, power bank or power yeah power bank with one ten volt pure sine wave AC outlet. There you go. So, That's a key thing. Pure sine wave. That way you don't get spikes in yeah. the power. Right. So about it, it 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 marked all the boxes for me. So I I needed one and um. Uh, you know, just to you know, get me through just for the ceremony rig. So I've got two barn weddings coming up in October. Uh, they're back to back. As a matter of fact, one's on Saturday, one's on Sunday after. And so I'm going to need, you know, battery operation operating um, uh, for the, the, the ceremony rig. So that's why I got that. Yeah, and now Hunter, back, Hunter, you've been looking one, right? Because my next DJ, uh, my next wedding gig is next year in September, and I'll be at the Blessed Barn. And last time, if I remember, the ceremony is in a big old field with no power. So I have to run everything battery powered. 
So I might invest in one of those little power stations for my uh, speaker and just a microphone and maybe hook my phone up and use a streaming service to play the ceremony music. So, yeah, I mean, you know, if you if you were running, you know, just one of those like a DMX Go and a, um, you know, and an iPad or something, you would really just need to power your speaker in the DMX Go. This would be plenty enough for that because those DMX or the, the uh, not the DMX Go, the, uh, the, the small controllers um those take up no power whatsoever and uh you know it's like a it's like a wireless receiver basically so this would handle that so yeah look on amazon for engine star it's e n g i n s t a r portable power station 155 watt so so this right here yeah. this this is from hercules this is a 99 dollar low controller usb powered it has a headphone jack out so you can do a headphone jack out to uh, an XLR, plug it into a speaker. This runs on USB power, so it powers off either a laptop or a tablet. You can download an app for it. You froze. It. <laughs> I froze. There you, you're back now. Okay. This is $99. Uh, you can plug this into USB powered. You can plug it into a tablet. You can plug it into a computer um, and use that if you want to. If you want to use a controller, it's headphone jack out to um, uh, to XLR and then plug the XLR into the into the speaker. I've done that for cocktail hour for that, you know, computer that and a couple of speakers works perfectly fine. I use that actually here on Twitch when I DJ on Twitch. That's a controller I use. I have another one in the van. It's a backup third controller in case something should go bad, something should go south. I have another controller. So it's it's one of the things that, you know, if you want to be lightweight and battery operated, tablets are great. Uh, DJ on tablet um, is a great software. It doesn't cost much to get it. Uh, and if you got songs, you can upload on there, you know, MP3s, uh, especially like pre-ceremony stuff, you know, Fire Machine Quartet, uh, two cellos, the piano guys, stuff like that. Great pre-ceremony as well as ceremony. I can't tell you how many times the piano guys, a thousand years I've used. Hey, uh, uh, let me see if I can get this close enough here. Oh, it just went away. Let me get it back. <laughs> uh, hey, that, what I was just talking about, though. Um, it, oh, there it is. It's a lightning deal right now, guys. 84 bucks. Go get it. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That would be perfect for the Ion Audio Total PA Max. Yeah, <laughs> lightning deal right now, $84. So, yeah. Yeah, there just, you go. It just popped on. So, Well, so there you go. You you guys watching, you guys have a option now, $84 plus tax, and depending if you have Prime or not, that could be a option for you to uh, who uh, go out and Prime? get. Who doesn't have Prime? There's exactly. people out there who don't because they don't How do you not have Prime? There's people out there who don't. It's worth every penny. I, would, I, I would believe so. But again, it, but I'd pay. I'd probably pay. Fifty would be my limit. Fifty a month would probably be my limit for Prime. It is. It is to me, it's worth the money because of the stuff. The amount of stuff I ordered uh, off of Amazon, especially for the business, uh, considering yep. everything I order from uh, Gaffer Tape, they always have great deals on Gaffer Tape. Uh, Two other incidentals that you need for the business. I, I actually bought uh, dress tape um, to help with uh, body mics, lapel mm. microphones. Uh, dress tape's a great thing uh, to use to hide microphones on people. Uh, that's something, you, it's kind of like medical tape. Doesn't hurt uh, the pull off though. Uh, I just want to tape it to a hairy uh, part of the body, like a chest or something like that, or an arm. But um it is a, a great thing to have because uh, especially uh, sometimes officiants, if you have a female officiant that has like a very thin spaghetti string dress and you need to put a microphone on you want to hide it, that is one of the ways you can do it. You can actually use it very nicely. I've used it before. Uh, but Amazon has a lot of great stuff you can get. And sometimes it's, it's more convenient to get it from them than it is going to Walmart or Target or other stores um so dj bradley what about you do you uh do you think you're now again jeff just got a hold of a small little one for uh for ceremonies 
But do you think uh, you would be interested in getting a uh, battery powered setup to use either for the main system or for ceremony? I've already got a, well, it's not a battery speaker, but I'm using a Halo Bolt, which I've had now since 2020. And it powers my, I'm using a Mackie, uh, either a 215, uh, a Thump 12 rather, which is a 12 inch, or I've got an EV12. I don't remember which model it is, but it will power either one of those along with uh, my wireless mics. And if I really need my uh, iPad, but I know my iPad battery is good for at least two hours running it, you know, the music, app, whatever music app I'm using. So I never really have to charge the iPad. And the setup I've been using now for two, yes, yeah, it's 2020. And it's been flawless for me, honestly. And it's actually gotten me out of a few pinches once where I had to plug some, you know, just to have some background music when the power went out. I had, you know, because I'd pull, we were, we were in a barn wedding, big thunderstorm, power went down for like half an hour, but I w we couldn't really have a dance per se, but, and it was kind of, it pretty much killed the reception, but I love music playing so people could at least commiserate and talk. Um, and for the cer my ceremony setup, it's exactly what I need for m most of my ceremonies. If I have a ceremony that's got like three or 400 people, then no, I wouldn't opt to use it. I would make sure I had, you know, two 15s going. But for the most part, this has been the ideal ceremony setup for me. My setup time, and I actually went back to not using lapel mics with it anymore. Because more often than not up here, a lot of the officiants, again, small town crap. But they're like, no, 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 I want it handheld. No, you're not putting one of those underneath me, blah, 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 blah. So I'm all about let it here. Here's a handheld in a mic stand if the couple wants it. And if they give me, you know, you know, any grief about not having a mic stand, I'll pull my sheets out and be like, sorry, you got to hold this. That's what our bride wants. So deal with it, buddy. But more often than not, they don't didn't want lapels. And, and the three years I had my lapel set up, I may have used it a dozen times because more often than not, everybody just wants a handheld. But it was definitely – it's definitely – Having the battery has made everything a lot easier for me. See, the one thing, I, I don't give them a choice. I don't give the officiant a choice because I've had a couple of officiants go, I want a handheld. It's like, no, we don't do that. Why not? Well, because one, it looks bad in pictures, and two, I know what I'm doing. You will sound good. And I've actually had officiants go, you're right. I do sound good because you get a right equipment. And it, it, it's, it's one of the things yeah. that you have to show them who is the sometimes who is the professional they're used to certain things because not every dj and again i'm not pointing fingers or saying names or anything like that but there's certain djs and and i see by certain groups and stuff like that how their setup is i can see because of their setup and how they are i, I don't want to throw anyone on the bus how they are with a setup I don't think they have the care, knowledge, or understanding how to do a lapel correctly to make sure they counteract, like, the squeal, the tinniness. There's certain things you get with a lapel mic where you don't give it a handheld, but that feedback you get with a, a lapel can be fought and you can win. It just takes a little extra work to do it. And it's one of the things you know, that sometimes I believe you can you – can, I don't give them a choice. I say, this is what we do. Let's do it. I I'll have a handheld on the side just in case. And you know, all the years I've been doing that, never used a handheld except for readings on a stick off to the side. I've done that. That's what I do for readings. Microphone on a stick is a, usually there are a temporary person come up there reading real quick. But when I do that, and I had that picture, especially for photographer going down the, the aisle to the bride and groom and the officiant. There's no microphone stand there. No microphone. Or they have a micro in hand or like bad Jerry Springer stick them in people's faces for Jerry beads. I don't want that. I want to have the pureness of the three of them, and that's it. And, I, again, I don't give them a choice. See, I, I tried doing that up here, but picking and choosing the, my battles, there because I work with a lot of the fish, same officiants over and over. So, and now that, you know, being at Celebrations and Cargill and Chapters on the Horizon as much as I am, I don't even, uh, like, Celebrations has sound built in. I don't have to worry about it. 
chapters and Cargill, I'm to, you're using what I give you, and I'm not going to deal with those officiants that are all bitchy about it, so to speak. Here, take your handheld. Let's just go with it, and that's all there is to it. Yep, I'm right there yeah, with me, you. Me, me, it's 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 the look. I I just can't do it. The one the I hate the look. Is, the Obviously, thing, the worst thing I see is. Uh, on TLC, it's four weddings, and they always do the same thing. I always have. Uh, I've yet to see, and I haven't watched in a while, but I've yet to see a DJ have the microphone. You know, lapel microphones. They usually have a microphone on a stick. I don't know if it's for the 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 TV crew or what. But I just see that, and to me, it, it, to me, it's a cringe moment. It's like, ah, I, I just can't. I just can't do that. I just can't bring myself to give an efficient. And I again, I did that a long time ago. And I always hated how it looked. And actually, I had a couple of brides go, I loved everything you did, but the microphone and stand, I, I don't know how it's going to look years down the road. That's the thing that it, stuck in our mind. I'm like, okay, this is going back probably 13, 14 years. And from there on in, I'm like, okay, I can do lapel microphones. I just need to, to, to learn to do it better. Uh, Jeff, if you do a ceremony, do you do handheld or do you do lapels? I use lapels. Yeah, I usually have two. I usually uh, hit this, uh, the the um, officiant and the groom, and um, sometimes the groom doesn't want it, and that sometimes they don't need it because it's a small venue. So I'll just do the officiant, and if it's super small, I don't even I don't even mic it. So I mean, if it's just you know ten rows, you know, or, or eight rows of people, you know, they're not you don't need to to make it any louder than their voice. So. Uh, yeah, zero, one, or two. And, that uh, yes, I, I, and I've I've never used a handheld. I don't offer that for um, for the uh, ceremony. I don't do yeah. I don't do any lapels anymore. Um, I can't stand them. They always sound terrible. Um, the people never speak directly into it. They don't speak loud enough. It's I'd rather have them have better sound and a single see that's the thing it's it's about the mic stand to use because when people hear mic stand they think of these old ass mic stands that are janky and you know a boom arm off to the side tri three tripod legs it's you know trip over it i have a nice flat base single single hand adjustable gator stand looks great easy for the i have the photographer take a picture before anybody's in there with the mic stand and without so all they have to do is click once thing gets out of the picture easily um and I've never had an issue with it. Um, I do. I did finally invest in a lapel because I will offer it, but it's going to be like a three hundred dollar upcharge because that goes from me just putting a thump go with my receiver on top and an iPad Bluetooth into it off a battery bank for my microphone receiver to actually getting a two or three channel mixer, needing you know more plugs and running wires, and it's way more work. So I used to do one lapel and a handheld so that. Efficient would have the lapel handheld in his pocket or on the stand, and that way, when it's time for them to say their vows, he could hold it off to them. Uh, but I was, you know, I was having the issues with transmission, and that's where my hatred for all things sure uh, started. Was when it started <laughs> not working. So I will never, it, I will it, never it, use sure mics in my life. I hate sure mics. I, I will, I will say, well, sure is here in in Chicago. I'm not again. I'm not a sure person. I actually use Audio Technica and Sennheiser. Uh, yep. Those are the brands I like, but again, and the microphones I actually use, the lapel microphones, is actually from a company called Body Mic, which is on eBay. I like mm -hmm. how their sound is, um, and you have to be happy with what you do. But again, uh, lapel microphones, there is some work to be done, some chasing, and I do use a multi EQ channel, so I have high, mid, low, and I EQ them. Uh, but also, here, here's another question. Um, no. I'm going to go around the room here real quickly. I want you guys, and again, it's all regional. It's all different from area to area. I'm not saying you should charge this. So I charge for ceremony alone, just the ceremony on site. That means in the same venue as a reception, if it's a separate room or if it's, you know, uh, an area adjacent to the main building or whatever, just outside on a lawn, $600 for ceremony. That's just for ceremony. So I'm going to go around the room and I'm going to ask, what do you charge for just for ceremony? So Hunter, what do you charge just for ceremony? Oh, uh, most 
my uh, gigs, I just charge per hour with everything, ceremony, cocktail hour, dinner, reception. I just charge per hour. Okay, you don't you don't separate uh, ceremony from? I don't. Okay, because there's people who don't do ceremony. They have, they have ceremony at a church or a ceremony somewhere else. And I do have a remote oh. ceremony option. That is $800 for remote. So just to go somewhere else, $800. But if it's on site, it's you know walking this you know within a short distance, it's six hundred dollars for ceremony. DJ Brentley, uh, what do you charge for ceremony for yourself for on site ceremony? Which is again, it's another another room adjacent, somewhere nearby. If it's like you said, the same room, and you know, like or if like it's at celebrations, I only charge an extra two hundred bucks. But with that. You know, you're already paying me seventeen hundred bucks to be ju for just your reception. So I'm okay for two hundred bucks now to just do the ceremony. If it's on site and I've only got to bring a, like I said, my small Mackie, you know, Thumb Twelve with a battery powered setup or something similar where I can plug in. Otherwise, it depend. You know, I'm gonna balance it out. If it's at a church, I want four hundred bucks because one that means I've got to call the church talk to the pastor, get all the ins and outs with them, make sure that, especially if you're de you know, doing it in a Catholic church, a lot of them will be very clear, instrumental, there are certain, you know, guidelines musically you have to follow. So I want to like, you know, I would, I'm going to ask four to 600 bucks for that. If we're doing like, you know, reception at one place in downtown La Crosse, but they want to go on top of the bluffs here, that's 600 bucks. I'm not following, you know, for me to go up to the bluffs, do your ceremony and then come back down from the bluffs. Cause that's, you know, 40 minutes up, 40 minutes down and definitely not my whole, and me being definitely afraid of heights. That's even, you know, work makes the worst of it for me. So I'm not keen on it. And most of the venues I DJ at, they have a ceremony site within walking distance Except for chapters on the horizon, you got to take the golf cart and go down the hill. And that's like a quarter mile down the hill. But that's fine because it's a golf cart, no big deal. And literally, I'll leave my ceremony set up down there outside where the, in the ceremony spot under their little archway canopy thing that covers up for the couple to walk out from. And I'll just pick it up on my way out of the venue that night. So I ain't even got to bring it back up the hill. Okay. So, yeah, so you, you go from minimum basically 200. Go from 200, 200 to 600. I'm six yeah. or 800. Cool thing is within the, he built in the per hour. Dwayne, what about you? What do you usually charge for a, a ceremony? I would charge them the same thing I would do for um, a reception. If I'm just doing a ceremony, it's it's almost. No, I'm, the I'm same. talking about it's ceremony oh. reception. So oh. you have the ceremony part, and then you have the reception. So you have their ceremony, let's say, in another room or a grassy area outside the building. You know, in, in you know inside the uh, vicinity or they have it like at a park 10 miles away or eight miles away. i've done i've done that you know people want at this certain park i've done the ceremony there and then met at the re reception hall later on in the day so what would you charge for either one of those so i have three package deals so that would be my top package deal where everything is just lumped into one sum and i try to make it so that the the ceremony and the reception is pretty close where i don't have to travel and then have to set up two different kind of setups so everything is pretty much right there so i just have one big huge package deal okay okay I'm so the, i'm not a big fan of the whole package thing i just just charge by the hour since i'm a small independent privately owned dj business who mainly does family and friends gotta do the packages Package, I I, a pack a package a package again either way it's 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 you can have a package and I have a package it's what you want to do what's best for your business and Hunter wants to charge for the hour hey fine great that's what he wants to do and you know Boy. that that's what he how he has his business that's how he has his business you have a package Matt I have a package Matt Brentley has a package Dwayne has a package that's the way we want to do our business everybody does stuff differently that's why I'm asking this question uh Jeff for a ceremony are you separate from your reception package? And if so, what is your usual charge? Uh, it's 150 if it's in the same room. If it's uh, outside the room, it's 300. Okay. 
And if it was like, you know, a mile or two down the road, uh, like a, a park or something. Then I would, I would go up. I don't know. It, it would vary depending on how far I'm going to be traveling. I mean, if it's a drive of the vehicle, it's probably more than 300, but it depends. Okay. I've never, I've never dealt with any, anything that's uh, more than a quarter mile from the, the venue. So, or even less, probably, <clears throat> you know, two, 300 it, yards. It's it's always fun. I'm sure you run into it, Jeff and Dwayne, and, and I know Brentley has run into it. I think Matt has, is the golf cart ride to where the venue that, oh, it's right outside a door. Well, why is there a golf cart here? Well, because it helps you move your equipment, and the, I don't deal with it's that. right outside the door. It's a it's a it's a two minute walk. Here it is. You're in the golf cart for like five six minutes to get there, and people you just saw people walking out the door. You get there, you have everything set up, you're tested. People are just now coming to the event to the uh, area for the ceremony. Always love that. Oh, it's a two minute walk. It's not far. <laughs> yeah, there's no property here in California, so we don't worry about that too much. You know, so Matt, what about you? What do you usually charge for a ceremony? Uh, I mean, I always include it in my package um, and just make the package more expensive. Um, I don't. Well, how ever much you make expe- to- How much more do you add to the package then? I don't know because I just lump it in for a price that I think is fair for everything in there. Um, if someone were to like want a ceremony, um, and it's like on site, then. Yeah, probably be like two hundred. Uh, because it's not so much that it's work; it's that now I have to be there. I mean, that's the thing is, if the ceremony's on site, you have to be there and set up before the ceremony. <coughs> so it's basically the same price. Like either I do your ceremony or I don't. Like one speaker and a mic receiver that takes me less than two minutes to set up. I'm not going to charge you much for it. I am going to charge you for that extra hour that I have to be there. Um. So, but like. I don't know. I'd charge like, like I said, if it, they want a lapel 300, if not, then they're fine with what I have. I mean, priced out, I used to do it at like 350 for the ceremony service. Um, so I don't know though. I don't really like I, 95% of the time the ceremony's on site and, uh, or, or if it's not, the ceremony is um, like at a church. So they have to use me if it's on site. It's not like they're just going to use, you know, well, well, what I get a lot of, this- what I get a lot of here is, Oh, we have a, a string quartet or a cellist playing for ceremony. So we don't we don't need your services till cocktail hour or reception. And I'm like, oh, so you don't need a, a microphone. People don't need to hear you. Uh, you don't need pre, you know, whatever. And then they're like, oh, we didn't think about that. I was like, yeah, so uh, you do need me there because I can't and just show up in the middle of ceremony setup. This is the, this is the thing, the way I look at it this way. I have it separate from the package because of the fact that, it is a very intricate in, intricate part of those of the wedding that it has a lot of things going on because you have it's very formal versus the reception itself. You have cocktail hour, which is not so formal. Dinner is not so formal. You have you know speeches. You have the special dances, which are very formal if they're doing that. But then you get into a party. A ceremony is purely very, very formal. You have pre-ceremony, you have all your, you know, your cast of characters, your bride, your groom, whomever it is, two brides, two grooms, whatever it is, going down that aisle, flower girls, clowns, officiants, parents, whatever is going down there. You have that pandetry and you have to look at that as work and how difficult it is. To me, you know, that's why I charge a separate fee. But people know going into it. Oh, there you go. Next, that's the next cover I'll be DJing for next year. There you go. Well, and that's uh, why, I you know, meeting, having a second I, meeting, I think is, is good. So a couple things here from people saying stuff. Um, DJ Adrian E says $300. And then Adrian, is that just on site? Or if they had to go further down, it would be different. Um Okay, no problem, Matt. You got to jump off. Go ahead and jump. If you got to jump in a second, we'll get off here. And- business business calls. That, that's the way it goes, man. DJ Mikey right. Mike's 4,800. Thanks, Matt, for coming in tonight. Uh, Mike also said, great topic. I did a barn wedding ceremony 1.75 miles away, so almost two miles away. And the venue had a cocktail hour down the bottom of the barn, and the reception was upstairs. So it was three sets plus a generator, which – Multiple setups, I charge extra fee for multiple setups. Like the wedding I had Saturday, I had a ceremony in one room. I had a reception in another room. But cocktail hour was in the hallway 
that's where he had the appetizers. And I had an extra speaker out there. So I charged an extra fee for an extra setup. And I ran the speakers wirelessly because they're just outside the doorway. But they were like, you know, 100 feet away. So I had to make sure that, you know, people could hear what's going on out there. Uh, that was on, on uh, that's on site requires extra equipment. What you should always charge extra for because it's extra work too. Time is money. And as an owner of a business, you guys out there all own businesses and all these DJs own business here. So make sure you follow, like, subscribe to them on YouTube. Like and follow on YouTube here. Make sure you smash that like button. As well as follow over on Twitch. <coughs> oh man, allergies are starting to creep up on me. That time of year, yes, fall is in the air, pumpkin spice everywhere, and the land of cheer, cheese and beer is flowing quickly above my head up north. And I want to think. Yeah, speaking of pumpkin spice, I just went to Starbucks yesterday or so. I got me a, a pumpkin spice latte, and that thing was so good. There you go. He's all about the pumpkin spice. I mean, we would do a pumpkin spice challenge for next week and uh, <laughs> next week. That uh, DJ Brentley's got to put pumpkin spice on everything he drinks for a whole entire day, including his three and one. Pumpkin spice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, also, I uh, thank DJ Brentley, <laughs> DJ Jeff Johnson, Dwayne, the Hitman, D Dubs. Thank you, DJ Cool Thing, as well as DJ Salsis. And one well, thank you all for tuning in tonight. Make sure you guys all enjoy yourselves this week. We'll see you again next time on the show. Peace out.